Dear viewers, welcome to Nursad Satellite Channel and Telelumir TV. Let's begin with the headlines. Pope Francis calls on the faithful to be strong in their faith and open in brotherhood. Jordanians are electing their representatives for the 20th parliament, and the results show the 10th Christian candidates have won. Colonel Pizzabella inspects the damage inflicted by the occupational forces on the Latin church in Jenin. Amman hosts the Evangelical Churches Conference for Jordan and the Palestinian territories. Also featured, elections are a right and a duty in a new episode of Sabahkum Noor. Welcome back. During his meeting with bishops, priests, consecrated persons and Christian education teachers at the Cathedral of Our Lady of Transition in Indonesia, and after listening to live testimonies, Pope Francis addressed them, saying, I encourage you to continue your mission, strong in faith and open to everyone in brotherhood and close to everyone in compassion. The Holy Father reflected with them on these three virtues, which are characterized by a natural inclination towards unity and peaceful coexistence. Faith can remind us of God's presence in the universe and in our lives. Being brothers and sisters means loving one another and recognizing that we are equal in our differences, as no two siblings or even twins are exactly alike. Therefore, according to his address, we should not impose our faith on others, but rather share and celebrate the joy of meeting Christ with great respect and fraternal affection towards everyone. Compassion, he said, should not be seen as a weakness, but as a virtue embodied in bending down to help those in need, restoring hope and empowering them with great and generous love. In a joyful democratic celebration, Jordanians went to the polls last Tuesday to cast their votes in the 2024 parliamentary elections to elect members of the 20th House of Representatives. The Independent Elections Commission published the official final results, including the names of all elected representatives from local and national lists, as well as the seats designated for Christians, Circassians and Shishans. The results also included the names of the women elected through the additional seats allocated for women and the number of votes received by each elected representative. The final results showed that 10 Christian candidates won, namely Hail Ayash from Zarqa Governorate, Wasfi Haddad from Ajloun Governorate, Jihad Mdanat from the Capital Governorate, Jamal Gammo from Balqa, Haytham Zayadeen from Karak, Isa Nassar Karachi from Madaba, Iyad Jibreen from Irbid, Huda Nafa' from Azam Party and Randi Khzouz from Taqaddum Party, Jihad Abui from Jordanian National Union Party. On this occasion, Dr. Basim al samaan Director of Nursat Office in Jordan, and the entire team extend their warm congratulations and blessings to all the elected representatives. We hope that everyone will work towards advancing our beloved Jordan, ensuring it remained a land of security, safety, and creativity in all aspects of life under the leadership of His Majesty, King Abdullah II and His Royal Highness Crown Prince Hussein bin Abdullah II. May God protect them. In a related context, Musa Al-Ma'ayta, chairman of the Independent Election Commission, confirmed during the opening of the Election Media Center that the commission had been working on the electoral process for several months and will continue until after the elections are concluded. The commission has worked on registering new political parties and updating the status of existing ones, bringing the total number of licensed parties in the kingdom to 38. Al Ma'ita explained during the inauguration of the Media Center, which was attended by religious, political, and media figures, as well as various community leaders, that the Commission had explained the electoral law to citizens in cooperation with different ministries and media professionals. He pointed out that journalists play a crucial role in monitoring the elections and following up on the results. Additionally, the Commission itself has a dedicated website that allows all citizens to track and monitor the election results. The Union of Evangelical Church Assemblies Conference for Jordan and the Holy Land, held in Amman under the theme that they may be one, concluded successfully. The three-day conference was attended by over 100 participants from Jordan and Palestine. During the conference, the heads of the assemblies from both countries provided explanations about the challenges faced by their assemblies. The conference also reviewed various activities conducted during this period, including training for ministries and participation in all Union of Evangelical Assemblies activities. Basha Imad al-Ma'ayta, president of the Jordanian Evangelical Church's Assembly, provided a brief overview of the history of evangelical work in the kingdom. Additionally, Pastor Dr. Munir Qaqish, president of the Union of Assemblies, delivered a spiritual sermon emphasizing that the unity desired by the Lord Jesus is based on love and obedience. Pastor Charil Qusta from Lebanon also participated in the sessions discussing the balance between unity and doctrine. 
On another note, the Islamic Christian Committee for Supporting Jerusalem and the Holy Sites praised the statement issued by the Middle East Council of Churches. The statement condemned the ongoing genocide in the Gaza Strip, the escalating violence by settlers, and the confiscation of land in the West Bank. The committee emphasized that the need for the Middle Eastern churches to call upon Western churches for dialogue and to confront the schemes of extremist Christian Zionism. It also revealed the violations and the harassment faced by Palestinian Christians, including their deprivation during religious holidays from visiting holy sites, which are themselves subject to desecration and profanation. The committee highlighted that the genocide and destruction perpetrated by the occupation in the Gaza Strip have resulted in the deaths and injuries of tens of thousands of both Muslims and Christians, the destruction of hundreds of thousands of homes, and numerous Islamic and Christian places of worship. His Beatitude Cardinal Pierre Battista Pizzabella, Patriarch of Jerusalem for the Latins, along with his accompanying delegation, made a solidarity visit to the Latin parish in Janine to assess the damage caused by the Israeli military operation in the city. Upon arrival, Cardinal Pizzabella was received by Father Amr Gibran, the parish priest, along with several other priests, religious sisters, members of the parish council, and local scouts and community members from the nearby Zababne parish. The Cardinal reviewed the damage inflicted on the Patriarch Kate's building and the difficult conditions experienced by the community. After listening to the welcoming words, he said, I came to be with you and to assure you that you are not alone. We are also going through a difficult time, but there is no room for despair. At the end of the visit, Cardinal Pizzabella, accompanied by Bishop William Shomali, the Patriarchal Vicar for the Latins in Jerusalem, took a tour of the area surrounding the parish to see the extent of the destruction caused by the recent military operation. In a related context, Father Amr Gibran, the parish priest of Janine, stated that they are going through very difficult days due to the Israeli forces invasion of the city. The damage has severely affected both private and public properties, including parishioners' possessions, infrastructure, businesses, and medical services. Father Gibran explained that these damages also impacted the area where the church is located, including the demolition of the streets in front of it and the destruction of several church-owned shops. He added, we are in daily contact with the parishioners, checking on their conditions, and we ask God in our prayer to end this war and grant us peace and the ability to live with dignity and freedom in the Holy Land. The Jordanian Ministry of Foreign Affairs condemned Israelis' continued aggression actions against the Gaza Strip, including attacks on civilians and shelters for displaced persons. The ministry reaffirmed the kingdom's rejection of the ongoing war, crimes, and genocide committed against the population in Gaza, highlighting the lack of its decisive international stance to compel Israel to halt its aggression, which has resulted in widespread killing, destruction, and an unprecedented humanitarian catastrophe. The ministry emphasized the need for the international community, particularly the United Nations Security Council, to fulfill its responsibilities and to stop the aggression immediately. At the invitation of the General Directorate of Schools of the Latin Patriarchate in Jordan, the Patriarch of Vicar Father Dr. Jihad Shwehat presided over a ceremony honoring outstanding high school students, both in scientific and literary branches, at the national level. The ceremony held at the Church of Our Lady of Nazareth in Swafiyya and attended by several priests, the top performing students and their families featured speeches by the event's host and the Director General of the Patriarchate Schools in the Kingdom. They congratulated the students on their achievements, emphasizing their success through faith, knowledge and learning, and also commended their families for their dedication and support throughout the academic year. After listening to a speech delivered by student Wael Hjazin, a prayer was offered for the high achievers, followed by musical and artistic performances by students from the Latin schools of al -Fahis. Under the presidency of Father Dr. Ashraf Nimri, Secretary General of the General Secretariat of Christian Educational Institutions in Jordan, the new academic year was inaugurated at the Rosary Sisters School in Majl Hamam. The event was attended by several members of the General Secretariat's Administrative Board and some of the religious sisters. The gathering included expressions of gratitude to the teaching staff for the dedication and for hosting the training sessions organized by the General Secretariat at the start of each academic year. These sessions aim to prepare teachers for the implementation of their noble mission and to keep up with scientific and educational advancement through the exchange of experiences among educators. The celebration was attended by 150 teachers representing 50 schools from across the all governorate 
of the kingdom. On the occasion of the Feast of the Nativity of the Blessed Virgin Mary and in celebration of the vesting of three postulants into the Order of the Holy Rosary, Bishop Rafiq Nahra, the Patriarchal Vicar for the Latins in Galilee, along with Father Ibrahim Sabah, the parish priest, presided over the festive Mass at the Church of the Annunciation in Nazareth. The ceremony was attended by a large congregation of priests, nuns, the postulants' families, and the faithful. The celebratory rites began with the announcement of the postulants, Elise El Hilu from Lebanon, Delin Maqba'a from Nazareth, and Sara Shahatit from Jordan, expressing their desire to wear the habit of the Order of the Holy Rosary and to deepen their commitment to the spiritually and lifestyle of religious life, as well as to understand the vows of the religious order. At the end of the Mass, the superior of the order gave a word of thanks and prayer for the new sisters, asking for the intercession of the Holy Family to guide them on their path towards making their final vows. The program Sabah Kum Noor, prepared and presented by Dr. Basim al Sam'an, with spiritual guidance from Father George Sharaiha, aired a new episode titled Elections, a Right and a Duty. The program featured interviews with Father Nabil Haddad, Father Bassam Shahatit, and Judge Faris Halase. During these discussions, the speaker agreed that Jordan is making significant strides towards political modernization. For the first time, the national parties are participating in parliamentary elections characterized by justice and equality, as guaranteed by the Jordanian constitution. The election have received broad consensus from the public with aim of achieving the common good for all. And with that, dear viewers, we have reached the end of our broadcast. Before we conclude, here's a recap of the highlights covered herein. Pope Francis calls on the faithful to be strong in their faith and open in brotherhood. Jordanians are electing their representatives for the 20th parliament, and the results show the 10th Christian candidates have won. Cardinal Pizzabella inspects the damage inflicted by the occupational forces on the Latin church in Jenin. Amman hosts the Evangelical Churches Conference for Jordan and the Palestinian territories. Also featured, elections are a right and a duty in a new episode of Sabah Kum Noor. For more information, please visit our website, noorsatjo.org. Thank you for watching. Hope to see you next time. Have a good day.